Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Board of Supervisors meeting for Calaveras County. Um, before we get started, shall we have the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, we'd like to remind everybody that uh, we will not have any clapping or bolsterous activity when we ha have our speakers talk. You can move your hands if you'd like. That's good as long as it's quiet. Uh, we'd like to uh, make sure that everybody gets proper respect, uh, speakers and board and chambers. So we're going to kind of uh, keep an eye on that. And with that, I'd like to go directly to public speaking. Madam Clerk, could you give us our... You don't want to? Recognition and acknowledgement. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'd be happy to read that. Do you want to read it? I'm sorry. So I don't we want have to... announcements by board. I'm sorry. Yes. Is there any announcements by the board? No. Yeah, I was at a meeting earlier today. It went quite well. Okay. <laughs> it's good. I, I was at a meeting. It didn't go as well. <laughs> good. Obviously, you didn't put your sticker there for your microphone, uh, Supervisor Gurman. <laughs> um, recognition and acknowledgments. Yeah. Supervisor Mills? Yes, this is to adopt a proclamation recognizing February 6th through February 10th of 2017 as Kindness Week in Calaveras County. And I have a proclamation before me that uh, it says Ripples of Kindness Week. Very nice. Uh, whereas National Random Acts of Kindness Week will ob be observed February 6th through February 10th, 2017, and whereas Calaveras County has participated in Random Acts of Kindness Week since 2010, and whereas all who live and or work within Calaveras County are encouraged to practice Random Acts of con Kindness, a tradition started in Angel's Camp by the Jim Brigance family, uh, and now therefore uh, be it proclaimed and I can't do that yet, so I'm going to call for a motion. I would entertain a motion to accept the resolution. I'm sorry, just to accept the proclamation. So moved. Moved by Supervisor Tofanelli. Second, please. Second. Second by Supervisor Garamendi. Any discussion? Public comment. Any public comment? <laughs> okay. Just for this today, it'd be nice to you folks. You know, it doesn't start till next week, but. I think I'll start early. And um, originally I told this fine young lady that I was going to object to kindness week because I believe kindness should be a year-round event. We should all be nice to each other. We should all reach out. You know, we don't have to hug each other, but at least a smile and a good wish. So with that, I brought you jelly beans. I'm not sure if the new board can accept these, but <coughs> yep. Bribery. one for fly, one for talk about Supervisor Platt, one for Supervisor Mills, Rye, one for Rye. Supervisor Olivera, yeah, don't take one that out of mine either. Supervisor Aaron Aaron Lee. One for Supervisor. Can I have your Supervisor Mills? Sure. I know you used to be there. One for Mr. Lopez. Okay. Yeah. One for Mr. Beautiful. Oh, y'all done? Yeah. Oh, I did. One for the beautiful Thank you, Seth Bill. I hope we're off the time. <laughs> 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 one for the Okay. And one for the young lady over here. I'm going to violate the rules for the Nor are we trying to be. You shouldn't have. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I had to go to the gas station because I just wasn't prepared to come here today. But All right, thank you, Mr. Slotten. Yeah. Ah, no thank you. <laughs> uh, public comment, any other co uh, public comments on this uh, agendized recognition item? Okay, bring it back to the board. Any more further discussion by the board? Thank you. We have a motion, a second. Call for a vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed by no. 
Okay, now therefore be it proclaimed that the Calaveras County Board of Supervisors recognizes the week of February 6th through 10th of 2017 to be Kindness Week throughout the county. Be it further proclaimed that the Board of Supervisors declares that the County of Calaveras is deemed a random acts of kindness zone during the week of February 6, 2017, and that the residents and visitors continue to observe the Ripple of Kindness project through 2017. And I think we have a representative here for this. We have a representative. Could you please come forward, ma'am? You can identify yourself with the microphone for us, and we'll make the presentation. My name is Donna Carolla. I work in your assessor's office. Oh, very good. I'm standing in for Jim Bergantz tonight. Okay. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Now, once again, I do want to just thank all of you. Um, we're all very grateful, all of this, that uh, work each year with the, um, the kindness group. I actually worked with Jim Bergantz many, many years ago when we started this, and we handed out dozens of roses. People drove in, they just chose the color, and we literally gave them a dozen roses that were all wrapped up in tissue and asked them if they would give a rose uh, away as a kindness gesture, and that's how it started. It was, it was spectacular, and it's gone on ever since. I really want to especially thank a few uh, local people that have really donate a lot of their time and money to support this. Uh, Kathy Zancanella and Mike Taylor, and especially uh, former supervisor Marita Calloway and uh, Gay Callan, who have continued to make uh, donations. Um, there is a website. It's listed on your, the ribbons at the bottom, if anyone is ever interested. It says www.seedsofkindness.com. Um, you can get a lot more information and so forth on there. And just once again, don't keep the blue ribbons now. <laughs> the idea is to There's sign it <laughs> and share it with someone. I was actually going through uh, some of my stuff just not too long ago in the office, and I found probably half a dozen of them with signatures all over them that people have passed on. So thank you all once again. Thank you. Question. So I'm supposed to give all these out to someone with an act of kindness? Yes. Pardon? Yeah, you're not to keep it. You guys gave me all of to me. <laughs> well, you're going to be a pretty popular guy. <laughs> Supervisor. Well, okay, okay. I'll, you're you're going to be a real. One. You're going to be a real popular. We gave you a job. You didn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> Slick how you did that. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we'll go to public comment, uh, and I'm going to let Madam Clerk read our admonition and let us know what's going to happen. So, public comment. Any item of interest to the public that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board and is not posted on the consent or regular agendas may be addressed during the public comment period. California law prohibits the board from taking action on any matter which is not posted on the agenda unless it is determined to be an emergency by the Board of Supervisors. If public comment is completed before the 30 minute allotted time period, the board may move immediately to the regular agenda, actually to the consent agenda. If Public comment is not completed during the allotted time period. It will be continued at the conclusion of the regular agenda in order to provide an opportunity for the remainder of the comments to be heard. Don't have anything to worry about. Okay. okay, ladies and gentlemen, public comment will be limited to three minutes per speaker. Well, <clears throat> I got to see the end of you. Yes, 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 I see the clock. And I believe if I'm interrupted by, uh, by a supervisor, I'll get extra time, so <laughs> better watch out. Um, uh, I just saw the end of the meeting today, and uh, I understand that some people were disappointed. And some of the audience <coughs> were disappointed as well. Um, the people of Calaveras County elected you to make hard decisions, and you made some very hard decisions. I got to commend uh, Supervisor Garamendi for his very adamant view. And he is right, 70% of the marijuana grows are in his district. But it's an issue that faces the whole county. And it's an issue that had to be addressed by all the board members. And I thank you for doing that. Um, you know, I want to sell my property. I don't care if it's a drug lord or if it's a, you know, a medicinal marijuana person or uh, if it's a 
if it's a religious uh, organization, uh, those things don't make much difference to me. What does make a difference to me is stability. And we hadn't had stability in Calaveras County for a few years because of marijuana. And the vote today was a reaction to the extreme actions of the past two or three years. And that's the way I want you to look at it. I don't want you to look at it as, as if uh, marijuana will never have a place in Calabrese County. It just might have a place on May, on May 2nd <coughs> in Calabrese County. But if it does have a place in Calabrese County on May 2nd, it has to be a place that is regulated, a place that is inclusive of all the people in Calaveras County's safety and wants. It's just not one group. And you know, part of what happened last year is in the urgency ordinance, we gave everything away. We gave them everything that they wanted. In the permanent ordinance, if we do have one, we should give them a, one, one thing more, and that is a one acre grow size, if we do have that. If we don't have it, I think that uh, we all have to accept that. Some of us might have to go, move away. Hopefully I move away before you guys. Mr. Slot, <laughs> address the microphone for us, okay. please. Yeah. They, they can't hear you on TV land uh, when well, you turn away. You're not supposed to use my name, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that. But I do thank each and every one of you for the work you did today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. And thank you, Megan. Carl. <laughs> Good evening, Bonnie Newman from Double Springs. Um, last week I didn't quite have a chance to finish what I was talking to you all about, uh, the unstable funding with the IHSS program and how uh, at, at one time uh, somebody spent a day in the life uh, of a home care worker and it opened their eyes and softened their heart to the experiences that home care workers uh, live on a daily basis with their clients. And um, that, uh, what I thought of would be helpful for you all, because you are our governing board, I, I would like to challenge you to spend a day in the life. You all have about 150 <laughs> consumers and providers in each of your districts who live with the IHSS program. I challenge you to find one of those people and look them up, talk to them, go to their house, spend a day in their life, walk a mile in their shoes, and then I think your eyes will be opened. I think your hearts will be melted just to the fact that these people are sometimes saviors for our fellow human beings, mostly family members, true, but sometimes it includes our neighbors, people we know in the community. Um, so that would be my challenge to you all. And if you can't find one, if you can't find somebody in your district, I can. I can find someone for you to team up with for a day, to spend a day in the life so you will learn what 350 people in your community are doing day to day for the county, because this is a county program, unheralded, pretty much under the radar, but I'd like you to think of that. And if you can't find someone, I know somebody, I've got somebody in mind that maybe they're not in your district, but if you can't find someone, I think it would be a great experience and then we'd like to hear how you feel about it afterwards so anyway thank you hi I'm Megan Guthrie again thank you for that so I would love to invite each and every one of you to my home I am an IHSS worker for my daughter, and I am trying to have a cannabis farm, CBD, for children in seizures. 
And I would love to reach out and have each and every one of you up at my home so you could live a day in a life in my shoes with my daughter and you could see the struggle she has on many fronts in social services, in school, in her quality of life, in her, sickness, in her sickness and her struggles, but her gains and what she does to push edges, in her ability to live life grand and go sit skiing and skydiving and bungee jumping, and the beautiful things she brings to this world, and what she can teach each and every one of you, and what we could learn from her. And maybe if you spent a day with us, you might have a little bit more of an understanding of the medicinal cannabis, because I really feel like we are so unheard and lost, and that there is such a real need, and the quality of medicine, and the farmers up here that are giving good quality medicine that my daughter will not have, and she will not have those rights to live this life. And I think unless you come up to my home and live that day, I don't think anyone can really understand it. So I open my home to each and every one of you, and I really hope that you come and spend a day with me. Thank you. Good evening, Robert Schufelt. Um, it was a day today, and uh, I've written everyone on the board and I've talked to many of you on the phone through repeated efforts I've been able to achieve that level of communication and it feels strange that I feel like I have to communicate the same message again today and that when the board made its decision it showed a very ugly political face today these are decisions that the people are about to make. And we are in the midst of a program that is by the sheriff said to renew the urgency ordinance. I'm very rarely do I feel like I would agree with the sheriff over our elected officials. And it just kind of shows a lack of accountability, I think, to the greater public of Calaveras. And I'm not sure who, who we think we're representing up there. And I just, I had, you know, I had to go home. I had to feed my child. I had to explain to my wife, I got to go back. You know, I can't not go back and register my disappointment with the direction that you guys chose to take today. It is, <laughs> you know, it's difficult for me to speak about this right now. And I, it's just, it's, you guys are going to get a permanent ordinance that's going to go into effect on May 1st, and then we're going to vote on May 2nd. I mean, the timeline, it's insane. It makes no sense. The, everyone who works for this county thinks the best course of action is to renew the urgency ordinance. They had, you know, fact-based arguments behind this conclusion that that's the best choice and the best course of action. And it was disregarded. You know, we have a thing. There are people who can't grow next year because of the urgency ordinance. There are no new people who can grow this year because of the urgency ordinance. We have a regulatory framework that is working. And <clears throat> it's working slower than anyone would want. We had to harass the county to get our stuff registered. But we did it. And now through actions of this board, not through the people, it's going to get taken away. And there's, you know, we could, there's a lot of arguments that could be had that, you know, it's a representative democracy, but we have a thing that's about to happen. It's a vote. Why you guys taking it away from the people is beyond me. Thank you, sir. Any other public speakers? Okay, then having none, we'll go to the next uh, agendized item. And I believe that is a consent agenda. Madam Clerk, am I reading the agenda correctly that there is 
only five <laughs> items, and those are all remaining on the consent agenda. There are four. And four yeah, items. Are remaining on the consent okay. agenda. Is there any, in fact, I'm going to let you read the admonition, if you would, Madam Clerk. Okay. The consent agenda items are expected to be routine and non-controversial. They will be acted upon by the board at one time without discussion. Any board member, staff member, or interested party may request removal of an item from the consent agenda for later discussion. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, having heard the admonition, is there any member of the public that would like to have any item on the consent agenda pulled for discussion. Having seen no response or no hands, I'll bring it back to the board. Any board member wish to have any item on the consent agenda pulled for discussion? Supervisor Tofanelli? Item number two. Item number two. Any other item to be pulled by the board? Okay. Could I, I would be entertaining an motion to accept on the consent agenda items three, four, and five. So moved. Second. So moved by Supervisor Mills, second by Supervisor Tofanelli. Public comment? Seeing no public comment, bring it back to the board. Call for the vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed by saying no. Motion carries 5-0 under unanimous. Let's go back to item number two. Supervisor Tofanelli. Yeah, uh, I had just one question on this. I see where um, we have the project budgeted at $80,000. And I just want to know where that figure came from and what it's based on and what happens if your bids come in over budget. Um, where do you go from there? Thank you for your uh, questions, Supervisor Tofanelli. Jeff Kravitz, Public Works. Um, <clears throat> the budgeted item is based upon an approximate square footage of, of cost for the removal and replacement of the gatehouse with some improvements, as well as some site adaptation features, a little bit of paving, some concrete walkway, slabway, slabs, and exterior stairs with a observation platform on top of the uh, gatehouse so that our gatehouse keepers can look into the loads um, and inspect them. Um, if the total project comes in over um, the budget, uh, we will be returning to the board to approve the change order amount. Um, and the monies would be coming from a capital improvement fund that we have at the, um, that's part of integrated waste management for large capital projects out at the, the, the landfill and our other facilities. And um, that fund currently, I believe, is around $6.8 million. Okay, I think that answers my question. Okay, any further questions of Mr. Krovitz by the board? <coughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, entertain public comment on this issue. Having seen no indication of any public comment, Bring it back to the board. I would entertain a motion for the agenda item number two, the public works adopting plans and specifications for the solicitation of a design build contractor for the Rock Creek Gatehouse replacement project. So moved, Mr. Chair. Moved by Supervisor Tofanelli. Second. Second by Supervisor Mills. Any question or discussion by the board? Public comment? Call for a vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed by indicate by saying no. Motion passes unanimously. Madam Clerk, we're next agenda item. Supervisor announcements. Board member announcements in compliance with AB 1234 chapter as government code section 53232.3D. This is the time for board members to report on meetings attended on behalf of the county and to carry out their duties as a county supervisor. Okay, I think we'll start left and go to right. From my left, Supervisor Clapp, any reporting on? 
No, I'm doing good. Thank you. Supervisor Mills? I have a list, but I left it at home. So I'll report out on next meeting. So you report next meeting. You left your list at home? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's better than the dog eater. <laughs> <laughs> at least we're honest. <laughs> Super, Supervisor Garamendi, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I did bring my list. Uh, I, I thought it is a little nod by my dog. Uh, I apologize. This is a long list, but we didn't, weren't able to do this last um, meeting. Uh, I did meet with the uh, Bob Dean, who chairs the RCD, and we sort of discussed the vision of the new board and as they go through the process of formation. I also attended a CSAC training on social media, um, finally realizing that the internet is here to stay and I better get on board with Facebook and whatnot. I took the training and uh, I, I'm now online. I met with uh, Senator, uh, excuse me, someone in Bigelow's office to discuss, and uh, Senator Berryhill's office a little bit to discuss their legislative agenda for 2017 and talk a little bit about some of our issues around tree mortality, uh, as well as infrastructure rebuilding for the Butte fire um, with them. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll find some ways to work together. I attended the RCRC uh, meeting on behalf of the county uh, before I, I got pointed to the spot at the, at the suggestion of the chair uh, where Senator Assemblyman Bigelow was honored uh, for his leadership and uh, talked about a lot of the issues that are facing us. As Ms. Newman pointed out earlier, um, IHHS is going to have major funding issues with the state of California withdrawing their funding, so we need to stay very close and on top of that. There's other issues that are going to be facing our county, including the uh, potential repeal of the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. And the state, what will happen to our counties is the state decides to be a bulwark against the federal changes. If we decide to continue, if the state decides to continue um, with the Medicaid and Medicare expansions, it's going to have massive impacts on our county because uh, we won't be getting up to $15 billion from the federal government to our state. So if IHHS is an example, those costs may be passed on to us in our county. So we have to watch uh, what happens there very closely. Um, I was able to meet with the county staff, uh, CCWD, CPUD, Volcano, and Caltel, as long, along with uh, uh, Supervisor Mills to discuss infrastructure expansion up in the Butte Fire Zone uh, with the basic premise of if we're going to be tearing up all the roads between McCallum Hill and Sheep Ranch, we should consider digging once and putting in a high-speed internet as well as uh, possibly water. Um, and that was very productive, and I really appreciate uh, Supervisor Mills joining me at that meeting. It was a great meeting that was held uh, through Patty Raggio at Central Fire, where they put together new mapping tools. Um, basically, maps available for when the next major event comes, there are maps that list all the homes and with dots. Uh, when incoming fire companies from out of the area roll into town, we could give them a map in that first 48 hours. Uh, where they'll know where people are at, and we're all speaking off the same sheet of music until uh, CAL FIRE sets up their command post. I thought it was really a great program that Central did, and, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to expand it to a lot, all of our districts um, to be prepared for the next fire. So really compliments to Patty and, and Central for doing that. Attended the chamber installation there with the Supervisor Mills on Friday, which was a lot of fun. And, uh, and shout out to Lumberjack Days for their crab feed last weekend where they raised money for scholarships up in West Point, as well as the Moe Kill Lions who had their annual enchilada feed, more scholarships for our students. So we got a lot of good people in our community doing good things for our community and uh, they always deserve recognition. That is my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Supervisor Garamendi. Supervisor Tofanelli. Well, I don't have a, a, quite an extensive list. It's, <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Karaman, <laughs> but I, I have a meeting scheduled tomorrow at 9:30 a.m. in Wallace with uh, public uh, with uh, uh, Peter Maurer um, to uh, meet with the owner of the uh, logging grinding operation down there um, and some of the constituents um, to go over what we can do to relieve some of the. Uh, noise problems down there and some of the operations going on down there. Um, I also have a COG meeting tomorrow at 5.30 here in the board chambers. And that's, what, that's all I have to report. Okay. Thank you, Supervisor Tofanelli. Uh, my turn. On the 11th, I attended a local tree mortality task force meeting. 
Uh, we got good news on that. We are now in operation with our curtain burners at the Vallecito, uh, Vallecito Correctional uh, Cal Fire area. Uh, that's a temporary site while the storm has rendered the proposed site next to Red Hill uh, inoperable until we get some rock in there and get that prepared. That operation was actually in effect right now and they are taking care of our uh, slash and dead tree due to the bark beetle situation uh, up on Highway 4 area. And that's going to be an area also for your district supervisor, Garamendi. Uh, and that evening on the 11th, I attended the school meeting regarding Proposition 14 at Bret Hart. That was a closed meeting, excuse me, <coughs> for school district personnel to provide a work session on the effects of Prop 64 as it affects our schools and what can be expected uh, and what has happened in the past and the problems they're dealing with. Uh, basically, it was a workshop situation that a lot of information was being able to be exchanged and was very helpful. Uh, I attended that also with Supervisor Mills and Supervisor Garamendi who attended that also. Um, excuse me a minute while I go through my calendar while my iPad went dead. On the 17th, I attended a meeting with uh, Evitz Pass Fire Department and the Moose Lodge up in Arnold and the CCWD uh, regarding the washout problem on Blagan Road. Uh, you may or not be aware that the washout due to the last storm has considered that washout culvert on Blagan Road to actually isolate the Moose Lodge. Uh, that means they will be out of operation for approximately three to four months until we can get that culvert repaired. Um, we are working on that. There is some concern whether or not they'll be able to survive without three or four months of anticipated revenue. Uh, that's a constant thing that we're considering. And we're working with the contractors with CCWD and our public works to see if we can get that expedited. But at this point, where there is no other access to the Moose Lodge. It's a very great concern with them. Uh, excuse me a minute. On the 21st, I attended the Friends of the Sheriff's Crab Feed with a lot of uh, great residents and citizens of this county. A great event. It was a sold-out event. Uh, my fellow supervisors were there. Uh, I think uh, three of them were. Maybe four. Okay. Uh, I had a great time. And we made sure that we didn't violate any Brown Act County Council. We didn't talk business. We just I didn't ate. sit with them. Yeah. <laughs> we, we just ate crab. <laughs> Uh, we will be attending uh, several uh, other meetings we're going to be attending. Uh, our COG meeting is tomorrow night. I am an alternate. I probably won't attend that. I think it's in good hands with Supervisor Tofanelli and Supervisor Mills. We did make committee assignments and we're getting everybody in gear to attend those meetings. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody that Form 700s need to be filed. Uh, and they have to be filed with the agency. Plus, uh, Madam Clerk has uh, your filing for this year for your supervisor position. That's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Anything else from the board or staff? Staff? Yeah. Um, I'd just like to send a reminder um, that um, all special districts should be notifying their, their Form 700 filers um, in the next couple of weeks that their annual uh, Form 700 filing is due on April 1st. And almost all districts are keeping those Form 700s themselves. They don't need to turn them in to me. So if you have questions, you can let me know. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Keep my eye on March 30th. County Council, we'll get with you in a moment, Ms. Be Ms. Newman. Nothing to report. Uh, CAO Lopez, anything to report? <clears throat> Very briefly, Mr. Chairman, on the 26th of this month, uh, I attended together with you a TOT meeting, which I think provides a lot of opportunities as we go through the budget process for this year. We may be looking at that more closely. But yeah, TOT I, being uh, trans, uh, transfer occupancy tax. Yeah, I, I, I feel to mention I did attend the CSAC training in Sacramento with CA Lopez, and uh, that's going to be an issue that we're going to be looking into here 
very shortly. Uh, some great information as to what other counties are doing with the, the uh, transit occupancy tax. Uh, it's something that, like I said, Calveras is kind of antiquated at. Uh, we'll be looking into that as a, a committee meeting, if you will, uh, with CAO uh, Lopez and with the board. Ms. Newman, you raised your hand. Can I have you go to the microphone, please? <clears throat> I just wanted to know if I could make an announcement. The IHSS Advisory Committee met yesterday, but unfortunately we did not have a quorum. Two of our, our patients, two of our consumers are, were very ill, and we're three to four people short on our board, and you, you're being asked to look to your district and see if you could find someone to help us fill our board, because last year we made quorum every meeting, and we just hate to get off to a bad start. So if you could look to your district to help us find past or present consumers of home care services. That doesn't have to be the program. It could be uh, paid for by insurance or private pay. Somebody who's actually been sick in their home, in their bed, and has needed someone to come in and help them. That's the experience we need on this board. Or members of the public. And that's anyone. So if you could help us do that, we'd really appreciate it. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Newman. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's nothing further from the board, nothing further from the public, meeting's adjourned.